humans and other carbon-based life forms. It's me, Dave Rubin, and this is the Rubin Report direct message for today, October 14th, 2020. And don't worry, people, there's no shortage of things to talk about. I don't know if you heard about this, but there is a confirmation hearing for a Supreme Court justice, and the senators just made complete fools of themselves. We're only going to show one clip, though, because I don't want to bludgeon you with clips of ridiculous, pompous, self-serving senators uh, making fools of themselves, so I only picked one. I picked the most special of all the clips, so we're gonna talk about that. Uh, then we are gonna talk about a video that was going viral last night that you are not gonna see on mainstream media. There, There is a rather incredible video uh, of a young black man on a Southwest flight from last night. I think it's from yesterday afternoon, actually, the video went viral a little later in the evening. Uh, and he's being kicked off the flight because he was eating with his mask down. Now you're allowed to eat with your mask down, you're allowed to drink with your mask down, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but you might find this part interesting. Uh, he had a Trump 2020 mask and he had a Black Voices for Trump hat. Do you think that might've had something to do with it? He was then kicked off by, uh, by a white employee of Southwest and the woman videotaping it was actually traveling with him. Uh, she teaches Constitution all over the country. They were traveling. He was doing some video work for her, and they were traveling to talk about the Constitution together. Uh, I actually just interviewed them a little bit before we're taping this. I got assurances from them that nothing that you don't see in the video happened that would have been warranted to uh, allow them to be kicked off. Uh, so I interviewed both of them. Uh, it's just about a 12 minute or so interview that I think you guys will find really interesting. And, and the reason I wanted to do it, of course, is because we know that if a young black man was kicked off a flight, in normal circumstances, this is the type of story that the media would say, we're systemically racist, this is racism, Southwest is racist, everyone should be fired, et cetera, et cetera. But because he was wearing a Trump mask and a Black Voices for Trump hat, somehow, I'm guessing this ain't gonna be on CNN today. This ain't gonna be on MSNBC. And thus, it leaves Dave Rubin to have to tell you stories of things that you should know about because, as I keep saying to you guys, one type of fake news is the stuff that they won't show you because it doesn't fit the narrative. So I had a really interesting interview with Philip, who's the young man and the woman that he was traveling with. Uh, and then the third story I wanted to do today is actually not current events. You know, I, I always tell you guys, I don't want you guys to just be obsessed with current events. I don't want to be obsessed with current events, but sometimes something comes across my desk that feels right for the moment that doesn't have anything to do with necessarily what's happening today. And yesterday I saw a video uh, posted by Rita Panahi, who's an Australian journalist uh, who I've had on the show and I've been on her show when I was in Australia. And she's one of the really, really great, she's a journalist. She's an actual journalist who I don't have to put air quotes around when I say journalism. That's the, that's the best thing I can say about a journalist. Uh, but she, she retweeted a video uh, that was originally from Firing Line, which was an interview show uh, decades ago. And there's an interview with former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. And in this two minute interview, which we're gonna show you the clip of, she talks about how the labor movement, which in effect is sort of our democratic party here uh, in America, so meaning our left, how it sort of always gets led by its worst elements and that how a small group of people can sort of expand and keep everybody in a constant state of fear. And that's why the thing gets so out of control. And I was watching it going, yes, this is literally exactly what I've been saying about our Democratic Party and why the good Democrats have nothing to do to stand up. Or they just have no ability, basically, to stand up against the radical left elements and the progressives and the Marxists and the rest, uh, and the rest of it. Uh, but before we get to that, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about Ancestry.com. You know all about them. Uh, but there are many paths to finding your family story. Whichever way you choose tracing your family generations back with a family tree or uncovering your ethnicity with Ancestry DNA is easy to get started with Ancestry. An Ancestry DNA test tells you where your ancestors are from, and Ancestry's billions of records and millions of family trees let you discover their personal stories. You could find a famous relative or perhaps a photo of your great-grandma as a little girl. 
Whatever you find, it's sure to change the whole way you look at your family history and yourself. After all, the story of your family is the story of you. Researching your history is a fun activity for the whole family, and the stories you learn about your shared past can bring you closer together. Ancestry DNA can reveal ethnic origins and provide historical details that bring your unique family story to life. Ancestry DNA doesn't just tell you which countries you're from, but can also pinpoint the specific regions within them, giving you insightful geographic detail about your history. Trace the paths of your recent ancestors and learn how and why your family moved from place to place around the world. No other DNA test delivers such a unique interactive experience. It's easy to start making discoveries with Ancestry. Grab an Ancestry DNA kit and start a free trial to amplify your discoveries with Ancestry's billions of records. Start exploring your family story today. Head to my URL at Ancestry.com slash Ruben to get your Ancestry DNA kit and start your free trial. That's Ancestry.com slash Ruben. And now back to me. All right, here we go, people. Uh, the big story, of course, of the day, certainly of yesterday, and it's gonna roll into today and, and finish up throughout the week, uh, is the, the confirmation hearings of Amy Coney Barrett. Now, on the broad side of this, first off, I don't expect all of you guys to be watching all of these things. I'm amazed, you know, one of the problems we have right now is because so many of us are, are trapped at home and we're working from home. You've got people, good people, who have lives and children and should be out doing things and talking to other people and being productive, and instead they're watching C-SPAN all day. I mean, watching confirmation hearings for a Supreme Court justice. That's not to uh, diminish the importance of a Supreme Court justice, uh, or even of a hearing, even though we know the outcome of the hearing already, right? Like, again, the Republicans have the votes. This woman is being confirmed as a Supreme Court judge. So everything you're watching, when Cory Booker is crying and everything else, it's all theater. And that doesn't diminish the important issues that they're sort of talking about, but there's, uh, there's a lot of just sort of drivel and theater and the fact that everyone is just watching this thing for hours, like you don't need to watch it for hours. If you could just get little, little bites, you can get a flavor of what's going on in the country and, uh, and, and sort of what the important issues are that we're talking about. In any event, my, my bumper sticker review of what's been going on um, is that she is absolutely an excellent candidate. She will, she will, let's put it this way, she will, be looking at the Constitution, not as, as I said to you guys yesterday, as she wants it to be, but as it was written. And that's how she will make her judicial decisions. I think that's the best thing you can ask for these people. You don't want judges legislating from the bench. You want them analyzing the law as it is. So beyond that, she also strikes me as a, as a pretty decent human being. I think she has seven uh, children, two of them adopted from Haiti, which we would have thought was a good thing until the last week or so when some crazy radical leftists have been saying it's because she's a colonizer or something like that. But she seems like a good family person. There, the wonderful moment yesterday where she holds up her notes and she's got nothing there and all the senators have essays and books and all this stuff in front of them. She seems totally competent and all of those things. And even John King on CNN yesterday said that in normal times, this is someone who would get something like 70 votes uh, she's basically going to get 51 because unfortunately it's going to be on partisan lines, which is a much bigger topic to talk about relative to just how everything is sort of devolved into Republican versus Democrat. Anyway, there was a bunch of viral videos yesterday of the senators asking her sort of ridiculous questions. Cory Booker literally almost as he was crying, like this overly emotive thing, asking her if she's a white supremacist and he basically said he had to ask her because our president won't deny white supremacists, uh, white supremacism. I mean, it's just, it's just so stupid, so much of it. But I thought the stupidest, it wasn't Cory Booker. The stupidest one was Senator Mazzy Hirono. She is from Hawaii. And uh, well, let's just go to the videotape. Uh, to ensure the fitness of nominees for a lifetime appointment to the federal bench or to any of the other uh, positions uh, for any of the committees on which they appear. Uh, I ask each nominee these two questions and I will ask them of you. Since you became a legal adult, have you ever made unwanted requests for sexual favors or committed any verbal or physical harassment or assault of a sexual nature? No, Senator Hirono. 
Have you ever faced discipline or entered into a settlement related to this kind of conduct? No, Senator. Judge Barrett, do you think it is appropriate for justices to consider real world impacts in their decision making, as Justice Ginsburg noted in a number of her dissents? Okay, so to be clear as to what just happened there, Mazzy just asked a woman who has never been accused of sexual favors or committing any verbal or physical harassment or assault of anyone in a sexual nature of otherwise, if she's done any of that stuff. Now, Mazzy's saying this is what she asks everybody, but just this type of stupidity, it's just theater for the click, for the moment that can possibly go viral for it to get listed in Twitter's trends so that someone out there will somehow associate Amy Coney Barrett with sexual favors or physical or sexual harassment or something like that. And it's just nonsense. Again, she is going to be confirmed. There's really no argument against whether she should be confirmed or not. Now, what you could say, what a lot of the Democrats were doing yesterday was they were saying, well, you know, you might flip uh, Roe v. Wade, which again, it's very important to say this because people are very confused as to what Roe v. Wade is. Roe v. Wade did not make abortion legal. What it did was it took it out of the states and it made it federally legal, right? So before that, the states all made their own decision. Um, so as a, as a small government guy and someone that believes in federalism, for me, even though as many of you know, and by the way, many of you criticize me for, uh, I lay out an, a, a begrudgingly pro-choice argument in my book, which is that in the first trimester, you leave it up to the woman. And I, and I lay out all the reasons for that. And I'm, and I'm more than happy to continue that discussion and, and, and disagree with some of you guys on that. That's just fine. Um, but what the, what the Democratic senators were doing, basically were saying, well, if you want to reverse that, then you, you are not qualified. And th that's not, first off, she can't prejudge a case, right? There's no case on the way up that would even get it there. Now there could be in the future, but she can't prejudge a case. So they're trying to get her to prejudge a case. Um, and so that in and of itself is bad, but also the idea that just because a case, just because there's a, a, a decision that has been made in the past, the Roe v. Wade decision, just because a decision has been made in the past, that a judge isn't allowed to potentially disagree with the decision, that, that doesn't really make sense. So the two they were trying to get her on, basically the implication was you hate women because you're gonna wanna flip Roe v. Wade, even though she has not said that, um, and that she will further dismantle Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, even though she has not specifically said that. And, and of course, will there be cases that get up to the Supreme Court about the Affordable Care Act? Of course there will. But also it's, it's extremely important to remember guys, and don't forget this, that judges sometimes who are brought in and thought of as conservative end up doing things that are not conservative and judges who are thought of as liberal end up doing things that are not thought of as liberal, right? I mean, this, this happened when Obamacare was passed in the first place with John Roberts. So these things do happen. But the, the, the bumper sticker, as I said before, is that she is going to be confirmed she strikes, I think, pretty much everybody as a decent person. And just watching, unfortunately, the Democrats, you know, are you a white supremacist? Have you ever sexually assaulted anyone? It's like, man, you guys really blew your load with Brett Kavanaugh. You went all in on trying to destroy a human being with Brett Kavanaugh. And now this is what you're left with. You're left with nothing. You're left with knowing that you're holding a farce hearing because she's gonna be confirmed and the fact that you're just throwing out crazy nonsense because you got nothing left to do. All right, guys, before we move to the second story, I wanna talk about Second Thoughts, the board game. I'm even holding it upright, that's pretty good. Uh, this game is seriously, seriously fun and I'm not just saying it, and uh, the makers of the game are, are fans of the show, uh, so I'm, I'm thrilled that they're, that they're supporting us here. Guys, Second Thoughts is this year's new favorite party game that'll be sure to be a hit with your friends and family on game night. The play of the game calls for each team to quickly create a list of words for their opponents to decipher, leading to hilarious bepuzzlement and laughter. Simply put, it's a classical word guessing game with a unique twist that allows players to personalize the content 
with their voluminous sense of wordsmithery or just their witty and warped imaginations. Each round of second thoughts is a hilarious high-speed attempt to stump the other team. Both teams create a list of five things using the letters revealed from the colored dice. Be witty and wise, but don't take too long because time is not on your side. The amount of time it takes your team to create the list is exactly how much time your opponents get to guess them. Second thoughts, the quick thinking versus fast talking party game. How am I doing on fast talking? Not too bad. Get yours today at secondthoughtsthegame.com. That's secondthoughtsthegame.com or at your local Target store. And now back to me doing the show. All right, here we go. So the next story that I want to cover today is this, this viral video that hopefully you've seen already. Uh, and as I mentioned, in, uh, in about an hour or so from posting this, we are going to post an interview with uh, the guy that you're uh, gonna see here in this viral video and the woman who videotaped it. This is video from a Southwest Airlines flight from yesterday where a young black man, who ju he just happens to be black, okay? Uh, he is, uh, he's eating uh, some nuts, I think it is. He's eating some nuts and I think he had a cup of coffee on a Southwest flight and he was kicked off a flight. The flight attendant reported that he wasn't wearing his mask. And the next thing you know, you've got, you know, the higher up at Southwest there kicking him off. The guy happens to be white that's kicking him off. He happens to be black. I don't really care about the racial element of any of this, except that the, uh, the little asterisk to the story is that he had a Trump 2020 mask and a young and a Black Voices for Trump uh, hat. And now we know this does not fit the narrative, right? This doesn't fit the narrative of racism because somehow if you're black and you're a Trump supporter, then nothing is racist. But we know if he wasn't a Trump supporter, then everything is racist. I mean, it's the same old silly nonsense. So we are going to post an, uh, an interview. It's, it's a very short interview. I wanted to get their feelings about what happened because it wasn't gonna be covered by mainstream. We're gonna post that interview in about an hour. Uh, but here's just a portion of the, of the viral video. Can you tell us the policy that prevents him from taking his mask off while he's eating, please? I was not, I was not here. The president, the crew has denied. Okay, but you're seeing him with eating. So please tell me the policy. Tell the crew to tell me the policy that says he cannot eat with his mask off. Here you go. Say that again. He put his mask on. He took it off when he started eating the nuts. That was it. I was sitting right here. So. It's not a publicity stunt. It's trying to make you follow policy indiscriminately and, and impartially. Okay? So, do you follow your policy indiscriminately and impartially, or do you just do this for people whose message you don't like? Okay, so just to be clear again, uh, when I talked to Philip and, uh, and the lady who uh, videotaped that, they have assured me that he was not doing anything untoward. He had not gotten into a fight or anything else before that. And I will give you one other little uh, preview of the interview, which is that they're not looking to sue. They wanna find out what happened. They'd like to get down to the end of it. Actually, the, the woman filming, they were, they were traveling because uh, she teaches the Constitution. To, to various groups throughout the country, and he was doing some video work for her. So these are not people, I mean, I think you'll see when you see the interview, Philip, this is not a guy that was looking for publicity, and you can even see it. You can even see it in that video, right? Like, we see other videos of people going bananas on planes and, and screaming at people and everything else because they just want attention, and this clearly was not the case with the guy. So that'll, that'll be up in about an hour. And I just wanna cover uh, one other thing today, and this is not pure, current events, um, but I did see a video that was uh, shared by Rita Panahi, who as I mentioned is a, is a journalist uh, in Australia, an actual journalist, and it was a video from Firing Line, which was an old interview show back in the day, and they had interviewed Margaret Thatcher, who's the former Prime Minister of England, and I thought what she said in this interview from about three decades ago is so applicable to what is happening with the Democrats and the left of today. So let's take a look. In 1959, you could count the number of extreme left-wingers in the Labour Party, certainly on two hands. There are perhaps seven or eight of them. 
we knew who they were. We all rather thought that this was just an example of the eccentricity of British politics that it allowed that kind of thing. The so-called Tribune. Was, yes, group, uh, yes, uh, and in a way was uh, rather proud that this thing happened. Now, uh, after the last election, there are more than 80 of them. So you see, you've gone from a situation in which you had a very few left-wingers in the Labour Party to one in which you've had over 80. But now, doesn't they, that argue against No, no, no. One thesis. moment. Uh, I haven't even developed the thesis yet. Now, you know you've travelled the world as I have. The one thing about left-wing politicians is they're always fanatical. They never let go. It's their religion. They go on and on. And although they are a minority of the Labour Party, about 80 to 100 out of some 300, they tend to dominate them in view. It's the left wing that I think has led the policies of the Labour Party. And your social democrats have not really argued with them, although they've been in the majority. They've not been in the ascendancy. Okay, so what she's describing there, I mean, man, doesn't that sound exactly like what has happened with the Democrats, right? That there was this like small, loud contingency and then it started getting bigger and then sort of the old school Democrats just withered beneath it. I mean, that that's almost everything that I've been talking about for the last couple of years and how the, the good liberals, whatever the remaining old school good liberals are, the, the liberals who don't want the government to do everything, who don't think everything is racist, who don't want to burn everything down. They seem to have no defense against the radical new progressive Marxist lefties, right? They have no defense against the AOCs and the Ilhan Omars. It's not because the AOCs and the Ilhan Omars have better ideas, it's because they bark loudly and they call everybody racist. And, and the liberals, unfortunately, they, they cower in the name of that. And that's why so many of the liberal institutions are crumbling because once you basically say, hey, however you feel about something is just as important as what the truth might be, well then everyone can come in with whatever their crazy theory of the day is and then you'll watch all of the institutions burn. So the line that I really thought was great there uh, is Thatcher saying the one thing with left-wing politicians is that they're fanatical it's their religion. And we've talked about this a bunch on the show, and I often quote my, my friend and former guest, Peter Bogosian, uh, who has talked about wokeism as a secular religion, meaning they've thrown away all, all other religious belief, all belief outside of themselves, right? And what they believe in is that they can create a world through laws, through creating a system that they install who is more powerful than who and who can take and who can give and all of those things that they can create a system that, that they, they don't need religion. It's, the, it's, their, it's their philosophical worldview of everything. This is also partly why, why generally right now, and I see this consistently, is that people on the left seem to be far more hysterical and angry and, and mean, really, than people on the right. And, and there's a fundamental reasoning for that. And the reasoning is they've, they've traded in any other belief for the belief in the system that they can create. And that, that is a type of religious thinking. Now, in most religions, you have some sort of redemption narrative, right? There's some sort of forgiveness that you can do. But, but actually, in this new woke religion, especially if you are a white heterosexual uh, Christian man, you have to bow forever. And I don't know about you guys out there, but I refuse to, to live by someone else's rules and bow to them forever. And that's why the, the walk away movement, meaning the people that are leaving the left, and it doesn't mean you're a card carrying Republican necessarily, but the people who are going, oh, you know those conservatives, they ain't so bad, those libertarians, they ain't so bad. Something interesting is happening in this, in this Trump space. And as you guys know, I just stumbled upon a Trump rally the other day and it was absolutely incredible. And there was no racist there or anything else like that. Um, you can see why the walkaway movement is, is picking up so much momentum um, and, and the Blexit movement and the rest of it. You can see it because young people are going, wait a minute, wait a minute. When, when did being on the left, which used to be about free speech and it used to be cool and, and, and artists, why were artists and musicians and comedians and all of the all of the things that make up culture. Why were they all lefties? Because the left used to be the home 
for free expression, but as they've become religious in nature, which is exactly what Margaret Thatcher is talking about, they've tried to stifle dissent. Show me where there's a healthy debate of ideas, where there's healthy dissent uh, on the left. It basically does not exist, which is partly also why Joe Biden seems incapable of, of answering a question honestly about what he thinks about anything because he knows his own base will destroy him. And again, that is not to say, people, ah, Ruben, you become such a Trump, blah, 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 or you, say, you went from being on the left and now you're just a conservative or something like that. And it's like, okay, if being gay married and pro-choice and against the death penalty, if all of that fits within the conservative tent um, or the, the tent on the right, well, that's a much better place to be because we can all agree to disagree and the rest of it. And I'm not trying to convince anyone that I'm right on all of the issues. I wrote a whole, a whole book about it. You don't have to agree with me about all of this stuff. Um, but I know that a certain set of people are willing to talk about it while a certain set of people have become fanatical and religious in their belief. Anyway, I thought the clip was worth playing because not only was this roughly 30 years ago that Margaret Thatcher was talking about it, but she was obviously talking about it uh, be, you know, with, uh, within the lens of what was happening politically in England. And it's like, you know, for everybody that wakes up and thinks, oh, this is so unique. What's happening right now is just so unique. It's never happened before and it'll never happen again. And it's the worst time ever. Well, these things are cyclical and they happened before. It happened with the Labour Party. And by the way, look at the Labour Party in the UK right now. It was completely destroyed by the radical leftists, right? The Jeremy Corbyn left was crushed in the elections. And, and my hope is that that is what will happen uh, with the Democrats this time, because then maybe they can recalibrate and some old school Democrats, some blue dog Democrats, some, some decent open-minded free speech Democrats could come back. And then guess what? As, as Jordan Peterson always says, you would then have a healthy tension between the left and the right, a healthy tension between Democrats and conservatives, a healthy tension between conservatives and liberals. All right, people, the interview uh, that I did with uh, the young man and, and the lady uh, from Southwest Flight that we just showed you the video, that'll be up in about an hour. This has been the Rubin Report Direct Message. Have a nice day, everybody, and uh, take a walk. How about taking a walk? Get out there and get a little sunshine. All right, see you guys tomorrow.